Basketball champion and Golden State Warriors coach Steve Kerr attributes his success to the heroic courage his grandparents demonstrated during their lifetime. His grandparents were instrumental in saving thousands of lives during the genocide. While most know Steve Kerr as a basketball star and an NBA coach, many are unaware of his family's history and its deep connection to the Armenian people. They were traveling so much. Almost every city, there'll be somebody in the stands saying something to me about uh, my grandparents or holding up an Armenian flag. It's incredibly humbling to hear these stories. You know, your grandparents are the only reason I'm here. I mean, pretty, uh, pretty moving and, and, um, and special, and it makes me feel really proud, but it makes me feel sad, too, to think about all of the, uh, the lives that were lost and the families that were impacted. A sacred story, one of courage and legendary real-life heroes, one being carefully chronicled by documentary filmmaker Ani Hovanisian. It's an important story because uh, Armenians the world over have for a century been feeling like their story is forgotten. But humanitarian efforts like those undertaken by the Kerr family showed her that her ancestors were not abandoned by the world. Even in the face of the most horrible inhumanity, that we're not alone, that there are people like Stanley and Elsa Kerr who put their lives on the line. Stanley Kerr and Elsa Reckman were Steve Kerr's grandparents. Stanley was a chemist. In 1919, he joined the Near East Relief as a relief worker. The Near East Relief was an American humanitarian organization which was created in response to the 1915 Armenian Genocide, where 1.5 million Armenians were killed by the Ottoman Turks. Elsa also had a calling to serve others. She traveled abroad to teach. They met in the Armenian town of Marash, and that is where they witnessed horrific events, but that is where they felt compelled to help. We're astounded that they had the courage at 21, 22 years old to go basically into the middle of World War I. Stanley wrote many letters home to his family describing the dangers the Armenians were facing. Dear mother and dad, tonight the French evacuate Marash, leaving those who have escaped massacre to their fate. Probably 10,000 have perished here in the last three weeks. No matter what happens, remember that I am ready to make any sacrifice, even death. Stanley kept his promise to make any sacrifice and stayed. He was assigned to care for 9,700 Armenians, including orphans, when he became the director of the Near East Relief in Marash. He took over five orphanages. Stanley and Elsa stayed in Marash until every remaining Armenian orphan was relocated safely to Lebanon. Then they got married, moved to Lebanon, and built a life there. Stanley and Elsa and the boys built this Near East Relief orphanage together called Nar Ibrahim. For 40 years, Stanley taught at the medical school of AUB, the American University of Beirut, where many of the orphans ended up studying and many of them became doctors. My siblings and I, you know, we know the story inside and out. It's a, a huge part of the family history. Much of the Kerr history is rooted in Lebanon. Steve's father, Malcolm, was born in Beirut. He was offered the job of his dreams to be president of AUB. And it was a very dangerous time in Lebanon. There was civil war, there was terrorism. Malcolm continued the Kerr legacy of selflessly serving others until... An Islamic terrorist group has claimed responsibility for the murder of 52-year-old Malcolm, Malcolm Kerr. was shot on his way to his campus office. Kerr dedicated his life to improving the quality of education in the Middle East. His life was cut short and my life was shaped by his influence and my mom's influence. And I know that uh, the person I am is basically who my parents raised. Steve was also born in Beirut. He had the opportunity to live abroad, which he says helped shape who he is today. I was lucky to receive a worldview uh, at a very young age to, to really see how other people lived. I probably didn't realize it at the time, but it was the best education I ever got. And because of that insight into the human condition, he feels compelled to take on a cause. I made gun safety, gun violence prevention, my own personal crusade about eight years ago. A lot of that has to do with uh, the death of my dad. As uh, grandkids of Stanley and Elsa, 
maybe that's my way of trying to do something positive for society and it's definitely something that um, I feel a responsibility for. Just as maybe Stanley and Elsa felt you know, way back in 1920. This human spirit carries on generations later in the Kerr family and generations carry on because of them. Those orphans they say now have five generations of families after them who are living and thriving because of people like the Kerrs. An incredible story, and Ani's project is still a work in progress, but many thanks to her for allowing me to tell this story.